Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to be going over drag and drop. As you already probably know, drag and drop is when you get any icon or any element in HTML, left click it, you can actually move it around while keeping the left click button pushed and then let it go. And you can drag and drop almost anything, any type of element out there you can actually drag and drop. All right. So drag and drop is actually extremely complicated, not just in Dart, but just in HTML and in JavaScript, just in web programming itself. And so we'll have to go over several videos with doing in, in doing this. What I'll actually do is let's just set it up the image itself. And then then in the next future videos, we'll actually show how to actually do the dragging and dropping. So in this video, we're just going to go input type equals text value equals drag me right there. Class equals draggable ID equals text drag draggable equals true. Let's go over that first draggable equals true. That's a um, characteristic of HTML5 and by default elements are not draggable. Look at this next element right inside here input type equals text. This is not draggable by default. I'm left clicking and I can't move it around. But if you say draggable equals true, you can actually move around that element itself. So that's characteristic of everything um, that is draggable in HTML5. The problem with it, though, is when you think about it, if you drag it and you try to move it around, it, that's it. You don't actually have any value. So how do I know what I am dragging? where I am dropping it, what I am doing with it, we don't actually know. Now, part of HTML5 says if you get text, highlight it, and you can actually drag and drop text into another text field. So that actually is very nicely done, built into the system. I didn't need to do anything in Dart for this. Gra drag it right back itself. But that's about the extent of what HTML5 does to help us. We'll do a button here, value equals drag me, same thing, draggable equals true. And then we'll have images, source equals dart.jpg right here. And then basket.png is right here. And I'll go ahead and make those images that are draggable as well. They have their own ID, dart, and basket. Now, wait a minute. What is this class equals draggable? Well, what you want is all elements on a given web application to have a similar class, right? A similar identification, not ID, identification, meaning, in other words, if you just had one element that was draggable and droppable, okay, in other words, just this element, uh, drag me, ID equals button drag. So if I did, if you think about it, query selector, pound sign, button drag, this one is draggable and I will have certain characteristics behind it. What if I want to expand? I want to get another element in the future, okay, for the future for the web application. Then I'd have to do another query selector to identify that other one. Do you remember the one on um, the last video where we talked about like a calculator, a series of numbers? You have to get a common characteristic to all draggable items and that is using the class equals draggable right so why do you use that as opposed to name well generally speaking you use classes when we talk about positioning right and draggable we have positioning the last video we talked about um, numbers so that that wasn't really positioning you could have used a class but we typically don't we just use it because that was just simply pure logic type of stuff. This is positioning, dragging and dropping by definition, so we use classes. I think that's the logic behind it, but it makes it easy to remember that way. Um, here on the images, the, um, the sources, we have class equals draggable and images. So we have two classes, both draggable and images. Why did I do that? Let's go to CSS. So on the button drag, I pushed some of these things out a little bit itself. Drag me. Um, This was the, which one is button drag? So button drag is, I'm going to push it left maybe 400 pixels instead, just to separate them so we can go ahead and drag and drop into each other and move things around. Remember, this one is not draggable at all. So I just had that inside there because I wanted to show the um, 
being able to drag and drop text being part of HTML5. Then we have the basket right here, and then we have the dart sign right here. And so I, again, I just pushed them down from the top a little bit, and I pushed them apart from each other. From the left, this is 50 pixels. From the left, this is 200 pixels, just so that I have some room to drag and drop. But the reason why I had a separate images, ignore this completely right now, um, a reason why I had this images um, class itself was that I wanted to make them smaller. Okay, I just want to make these icons a little smaller as opposed to being really huge, because if you look at it, that's actually pretty big, right? I wanted to shrink them all the same size itself. You didn't have to do that, but it's it makes it easier to read. All right, so that's all we're really going to do in this video. Just go over the setup, and in the next few videos, we'll actually discuss the actual dragging and dropping. Thank you.